All right. All right. Hey, everybody. How are you? Hello. Welcome to Movie Phone <laughs> with streaming stock quotes. Howard, what are you talking about? Look, it's Jeremy. We got Flavia. We got Felipe. We got a good crew here. Let's... Hey, what's up? Hey, everybody. This is Howard. I am teaching you this class. You're very lucky to have me as a teacher. Uh, Howard, usually when we do introductions, I'm supposed to tell everyone how good you are. <laughs> And no, you're supposed to be the humble one, and you're supposed to no. say, you're supposed to say, oh, you said too much, but but in your case, you've just decided to uh, just say how great you are right off the bat, and that's fine. Um, I I plan on being the ugly American right from the get go. <laughs> Do you even guys know though, ugly American? <laughs> even though I'm a Canadian, I'm a Canadian. Okay, Lee, take it away. Okay, great. So I think there are going to be probably more people to join the class. I have a feeling this is going to be a very, very popular class. I can just tell from the amount of people that are joining right out of the way. It looks like it's already filled, which is awesome. Uh, we have a very special guest today. His name is Howard Linden. He is a uh, well-known investor uh, in, in technology companies as well as um, in the public markets. So we thought we would invite him to do a class on Wall Street English. And the focus is going to be about like words that maybe people wouldn't necessarily know that are used in the financial world. Um, and you know, it's going to be fun. Please stop us at any point if anyone has a question uh, about um, about uh, what Howard is saying or what I'm going to say. And I'm going to sort of help out with teaching as, as well. Um, and another thing we should uh, point out, Howard, is if there's ever a sound problem, you can always go to the bottom. You can go below there and actually scroll over people's names. You can see the pictures below. That's a way yeah. you can see what people's names are. And if there's a problem with too much noise coming from their headset, you can actually mute them. Um, and that's a, a helpful thing that can that's helpful when you know if uh, if someone gets a little too unrowdy rowdy and if any of these students start acting up we're gonna kick them out of class right guys I'm gonna kick you guys out of class no All right. anyway uh, who can everybody hear me yes yes, uh, yes. okay great so so uh, as Lee said my name's Howard uh, I was born in Toronto Canada um, so, Portuguese is my first language. The um, <laughs> it's a tough crowd. Look at this crowd. That's a joke, guys. Portuguese is not his tough first language. Hey, Canadian. This is okay, it's Lee. You don't funny. have to. This is, this is like my first time doing stand up in Toronto. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so I am forty seven years old. Uh, Two kids, a dog, and and none of them like Wall Street or stocks. How old are so, your kids? Uh, my kids are thirteen and fourteen, okay. and uh, I'm trying to interest them. So it's kind of like finance is their first language now too. Just like you're wanting to learn uh, the language of uh, uh, finance. So uh, a site that we created to really teach people uh, the language of the market is is uh, a site called stocktwist.com and I'll really put it in the what chat it is for everybody sorry i'm putting it in the chat for everybody stocktwist okay. is the name of oh that's cool I, yeah thank you lee so it's a great place for if you don't really know english I'm going to get a little feedback so if you can hear me. Um, even if you don't speak very good English, we have a lot of foreign traders and investors that are trying to learn the language of the market on StockTwits just by leaving the stream open. So it's a great uh, speed ramp, as you will, or a quick way to learn how people talk in the language of finance. But today we're going to go really simple. And, and learn a few words. 
So first, uh, you know, starting on my left um, with uh, Ahmad, uh, where are you uh, as, uh, Googling us from? Where are you at? Ahmed? Ahmed, where are you from? I'm from Turkey. Turkey? Yeah. I, I just I just had a Turkish coffee today at uh, an Israeli really? restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit, that's a very strong coffee. Uh, so welcome from Turkey. Never been. Thank you. And, and then Flavia, is that pronounced how you pronounce your name? Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Brazil. You're from Brazil? Yeah. So I'll see you. I'm coming down for the World Cup, so I'll see you then. Very good. If you're still willing to talk to me. And then Guillaume, <laughs> is it uh, Guillaume? Where are you? Where are you? Uh, I'm Guilherme. I'm from Brazil as well. And I actually applied to be a volunteer in the World Cup. Okay, thank you, thank you. And then this is me, Howard, in my receding hairline. And then Laura, where are you? You guys from? know what a receding hairline is? I'm gonna write that for you. You might not know what that is. I want to point that out. It's a pretty it important thing. Hair. It's like it's like a tide. This used to be my hair in when in my twenties, and then it went here. And now it's here, <laughs> and then the next class I teach, it could be back there. It means okay. he's old, everybody. He's yeah. very old. <laughs> so, on um, Wall Street, old on um, Wall Street, old is not good. <laughs> they they kill the old people on Wall Street. <laughs> okay, and uh, Laura, where are you from? I'm from Buenos Aires. Oh, Buen Buenos Aires. Yes. Argentina, welcome to the house. Okay, <laughs> Lee. Lee is from uh, New Jersey. Hey, Lee. Incorrect, but good try. Okay, I have three guesses. You are from Compton. That's correct. Okay, from and then and then Philippe, you're French for sure. No, yeah, just my name. Uh, I'm from São Paulo, Brazil. Okay. Yeah. We couldn't scare up a Canadian. Hang on. Wait a minute. What about Sarah? Sarah loves shopping. You were calling from Fashion Valley, probably, a mall. Where are you calling? I'm from Taiwan, but I live in Virginia. Sorry? Oh, I, I'm from Taiwan, but I live in Virginia. Oh, Taiwan. What time is it there? Uh, Taiwan now is 8 o'clock in the morning, but oh, I'm... Okay. I'm in Virginia now, so probably the same time zone. Oh, you're in Virginia. Well, that's not as sexy, so hang on. <laughs> what would be very interesting <laughs> is if you could call me with the prices from Taiwan and I could uh, front run the world. That would be interesting. That's That would make Hangouts very cool. Okay, and then uh, Tiago? Ti how yeah. do you pronounce your name? Tiago. Tiago. Yeah. Okay. I'm from Brazil from? as well. Holy smokes! It's a Brazil. Uh, it's a Brazil hit show. Yeah, okay. but right now, right now I'm in San Francisco. I'm on vacation here. Okay, so it's but he, good. But to he's have... been a long time Colingo user for a long time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Since well, the very beginning. So I'm sure there's some other people listening in. So so I love Wall Street. Well, I don't love Wall Street per se. I've never really worked on Wall Street, but I love I love the stock market. Um, and I think it's, I think it's one of the greatest uh, things about America is, you know, beyond. Can you hear me, everybody? Sorry, I got background noise. Uh, beyond the Starbucks and McDonald's and Levi's, um, the American stock market is one of our greatest um, achievements. And it's something that uh, over the last 10 years, even 15 years, has been uh, abused. And, but at the same time that Americans are so negative, I think the rest of the world is grabbing on to this idea of markets and uh, capitalism and freedom. So I think so it's a very... Can I stop you for one sec, Howard? I'm sorry. I just want to make sure to ask yeah. a question. Does everyone understand that the... The uh, the stock market is located on Wall Street in New York City. That's when he when he says Wall Street, he means the stock market. Does everyone understand that? Uh huh. Yep. Flavia, 
So I'll, I can explain it. So on Wall Street, it's the name of a street in uh, New York City. That's where uh, the New York Stock Exchange is. So that's where a lot of people are trading stocks. And when people talk about Wall Street, they talk about uh, the econo the the financial markets in general. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 trade the World Trade Center went was near Wall Street. It was in it was in New York in Manhattan near Wall Street. All right, sorry to interrupt. I'm such a bad student. Keep going, Howard. <laughs> well, no, I, I I gotta I don't know the level of everybody. So yeah. so quickly, uh, Ahmed, how's your English? Okay, not okay. Uh, not okay. Okay, not so good. Okay, so and then uh, Flavia. I I guess I'm an uh, intermediate. Okay. And Guillermo? I'm okay. You're okay. You seem bored or you, you speak English well enough to be bored with me. No. no, no. He's no, no. not bored. This is when he's he's looking this very intensely. Actually... Yes. I'm just paying attention. Can someone get Guillermo a Red Bull, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And and Laura, you are a beginner in English? Uh, no, I am in intermediate also. He's okay. also. What do you do for a living, Laura? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be advanced. But what are you trying to do for a living? Uh, I'm trying to be an English teacher. So I, I I am getting example from here. Very cool. Okay, and then uh, Philippe, it looks like your English is good because you totally yeah. get my humor. Okay, yeah. and then Sarah, Sarah loves shopping. Um, okay. You have Sarah, a great. You have a great. What's your favorite out. store? If you love shopping, what's your favorite store? Let's see if Howard thinks you should buy that stock. Great <laughs> idea. Yeah. Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. Very smart, Sarah. Sarah is uh, not only a good shopper, but she believes in the cloud. So uh, I think if that's the first lesson. Is we learned something today, guys. If you, if you, if you haven't learned anything, Amazon been very, very good to me. Amazon been very, very good to me. The uh, <laughs> so Amazon is the best retail. So we can quickly say that AMZN. So American companies that are public companies, and when I say public companies, I mean companies that people can uh, buy and sell shares of. Uh, Amazon, uh, which went public in 1999, and, and Lee, you can write some notes here for everybody right. while I'm talking, uh, <clears throat> has been one of the greatest uh, American and global growth stories of all time. Do you mind uh, if I interject for a second? Um, so, I'm starting to. I'll give you one more interjection. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I think he might be serious. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe you are. Uh, Amazon uh, was a small company like Colingo now that you guys are a part of, and then it grew really, really fast, and now it's a huge company, um, and it is now a public company, so anyone can buy stock in it. And that's why it's public. It's like what happened with Facebook. It's it's very similar than what happened to Facebook. So these okay, companies. Okay. Yes. I can, absolutely. Go ahead, Howard. Explain that. Uh, the it's exactly and and I'll get better at showing because pictures tell a thousand words, and I don't I don't know how to use Hangouts very well, um, but. If I was going to teach the language of of of, of markets uh, full time, I would use pictures like Facebook and Instagram. The reason Facebook and Instagram uh, resonate globally is because pictures are a language uh, that are spoken by everybody, and the stock market is a very visual place. Even though people are trading uh, and moving uh, things back and forth. Uh, in the end, stocks have a picture of uh, history, uh, what people are willing to pay over time. And right now, Facebook uh, is is uh, you know 
is the company that has captured the global attention uh, uh, in the public markets. And in 1999, uh, that company was Amazon. And it went through some very dark uh, years um, uh, in, in the two, early 2000s where no matter how much Shara or Lee or Philippe loved Amazon, they had to catch up to the, the world's expectation. So when you think about the stock market, it, how people value companies is very much around two things. Emotion, which is, and the valuation, which is the amount of shares multiplied by the price of the company, and then expectations. And that's just always a wild card to figure out. So it's very much like a mood ring. So when I say stock market, it really is a global term, much like Facebook is. On Facebook, everybody is very connected, just like a stock market uh, with companies and prices. Facebook is the largest market in the world, which is why people love or wanted to buy the stock because it's really a global market where everybody is connected through some other connection and holding hands and it's really potentially one of the greatest markets in the world time will tell if if it uh, captures or realizes all that potential and there is so much at stake that Amazon Google Obviously, each country has its own Amazon and Google wannabes, but everybody's chasing this global, uh, social, connected world, uh, including where we're on right now, Google Hangouts, where we can all learn English and we can learn stock market. So, so that's exciting. So thank you, everybody, for uh, listening in and trying to learn about. So when I, get, when I talk about stock markets, I get so excited because it really is a language, uh, it really is uh, a way to break down um, barriers where if where Philippe and I may not have anything in common because he lives in Brazil, but we both can chat about or talk on Hangouts and learn about the opportunity, you know, I may think Amazon's great, but now because of Hangouts, the leap can tell me that Amazon is getting their ass kicked in Brazil by another company and and so there's just all these new data points and so again the stock market is this giant uh, open connection and uh, it's a really important language and actually a very valuable lesson for for or a valuable uh, language for people to understand because it's now global what used to be, as Lee said, Wall Street, this street, one street in New York called Wall Street that controlled all the information. Uh, so in, in the uh, 1920s when the stock market, um, when technology really started bringing the stock market to, the, uh, to a bigger audience in the United States, all the information came through this ticker tape and this tape would come out and someone would read the tape, and that was the market. Hey, we got a new uh, person. Who's that in the room? We got. Uh, there's Hi, new. Bruno. Hey, hey Bruno. Yes. Bruno. Hello. I assume you're from Brazil. Yes, yes. Today is a Brazil special class. Who did Bruno kick out? Who did Bruno kick out? I think he kicked out a Met. Oh, a Met just got. Did a Met uh, get taken away by the uh, Christian left? Or did he just leave on his own? Bruno, did you kick him out? I just made a religious joke. On yeah, that, that's... Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if it was appropriate. No, it's okay. Don't worry, this isn't being filmed or anything like that. It's not going to be on YouTube, right, guys? So... <laughs> I forget where I was. I, nobody's understood me, but I'm having a good time. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> everybody's kind of taking a step back. So... Uh, it, how many we people about this power? Okay, so anybody understand what I'm talking about? Is anybody getting excited yet? Sarah, have you been yeah. shopping or are you listening? Yeah, are you just shopping? 
I'm very concentrating. Okay, she's concentrating. Is okay. there Amazon in Taiwan? Yeah, is there an Amazon in Taiwan? No. There's okay, so Amazon the, does. Some of the stores on Amazon, they can ship internationally. Okay, so is there equivalent of Amazon? What is the biggest uh, retailer in Taiwan? Mm, Yahoo. Apple. Yahoo. Yahoo. Oh, I, oh, Yahoo. Yeah, Yahoo. Yahoo, right. Yahoo in Japan is huge, so I guess it's big in Taiwan. Interesting. Yeah. So, well, this Felipe, is, why... is there an Amazon in Brazil? I think there is, right? Mm, not yet. Is there, is there a company that sells things online? Well, there are many companies that sell stuff online, but I don't think there is like one that's uh, as big as Amazon. Um, I think there, is one there are many companies, though. Uh, so... Ponto Frio, Americanas, uh, but whatever. So what's mm -hmm. exciting for me is as someone who I actually own shares in Amazon. Um, is so he's an American investor in Amazon. Yeah, I'm an investor, and, and but I, I, the great thing about the stock market is I can change my mind tomorrow and not be an investor. So, so the stock market is also about being able to change your mind. So while some people, the biggest misconception of, of Wall Street is that, and the biggest freedom is one of the, this is what makes uh, Wall Street so incredible, or uh, the stock market, is you can change your mind. Meaning, I love Amazon right now, but if I talk to enough people that, that don't like Amazon or can convince me that I don't want to own Amazon, I can sell it. That's incredible. And the transaction costs have dropped to zero if you live in the United States. Basically, you can change your mind all day in the United States <laughs> for free, um, <laughs> which is what makes the stock market as we in 2013 so amazing. So Amazon, getting back to Amazon and thinking about it in the stock market is there's two ways to look at the Brazil and Taiwanese problem. It's either an opportunity that Amazon one day will own or it's a place where they may never, uh, or they may have to acquire another company to be uh, um, relevant in Taiwan and Brazil. Do you guys or, understand that? So, uh, so Amazon can buy another company in one of these countries, and then they will have the market. So they could buy Mercado Libre, which is in uh, yeah. Brazil, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So Mercado Libre is a great example of a, of a company out of Latin America uh, that was uh, actually uh, the original investor is in New York, Fred Wilson, um, and Mercado Libre I think is like the eBay or the shopping site of Latin America. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah Mercado uh, Libre isn't like uh, Amazon. It's more, much more, more like, like eBay. More yeah, like it's eBay? people selling to other people. Not yeah, company so, selling to, to people. Yeah, mm. so it's more like eBay, correct? Yeah. And they're a huge company, and it trades on the uh, NASDAQ. M-E-L-I is the uh, company ticker symbol. So if you believe in e-commerce and Latin America, uh, Mercado Libra, the stock market allows you an opportunity to own something that you understand uh, which is Mercado Libre. I actually, it's done very well over the years. I don't own it right now, but a very interesting uh, company. So that's another interesting uh, thing about the stock market. It allows you um, to participate uh, in huge trends, uh, even if you have $100 or $300, it allows you to participate in these great uh, uh, businesses, global now, global now yeah. businesses. Yeah. So two words that are used the most on Wall Street are bull and bear. And um, I'm writing it down for you there. I don't know how that originated. I think Merrill Lynch might have been the company, but I'm not sure. But a bull uh, signifies strength and a bear 
uh, signifies, even though it's a strong animal, obviously, and a scary animal, I guess it's more about it being uh, a negative uh, a mood share, like bear market is much more, uh, it's the official definition of a bear market is when one of the American indexes, like the Dow Jones, uh, drops 20%. That uh, is in definition of a bear market. So on TV, you hear bull bear all the time, but the actual definition of a bear is when the market is down 20%, so an index. Um, it's probably the two most poorly overused words, and I think uh, this next generation of investors will think much more uh, socially and emotionally uh, about the stock market and, and, you, and drop these terms bull and bear. Um, you either own something. I think it's very important that you either you either are willing to own it, and if you're not willing to own it, then you are a seller of the stock. There's really no in between. So you either or or you just don't care. So um, Wall Street, I think in the in in its in its efforts to market itself and make things digestible to the American people, they. Uh, Everything became about bull bear, and you know, in the new era, it's hot, not hot, or like, or uh, share, or retweet. Um, but in the stock market, it's bull or bear, and you know, they put a they put the question to you, and you say you're a bull or a bear. Um, what else? Uh, dog is a word that uh, is used a lot in uh, the stock market, and it in and a dog. And when you're talking about a stock, uh, is generally a derogatory word. Uh, even though a dog is, a, is is our best friend, if someone says that your company is a dog, uh, that is one of the uh, <laughs> one of you know. If if I went to Lee and said Colingo's a dog, it wouldn't be a good thing. Do you guys think so, that Colingo's a dog? Hold on, hold I just on. said Let's if. Stop here for a second. Hold I on. I just said if. <laughs> <laughs> so I think everybody in this room. Is bullish on Colingo, and I think what makes Colingo so interesting um, is that they're using—they're not—they're taking the technology and building on top of things, which is that's called great, mashups. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's so much a mashup. They're definitely, but it's a, it's a mashup. But it's they're building on top of other people's. Uh, technologies and improving both of them. They're giving Google Hangouts and Facebook another purpose, which strengthens, you know, again, why Facebook's such an interesting company is because nobody can predict where that next gusher. So when people drilled for oil, I'm, I'm jumping around, when, when people okay. drilled for oil, the excitement of drilling for oil in the 1920s and 1930s was so, was everybody wanted to get the next gusher. And what makes you guys Facebook understand that a gusher is when oil comes out of this, the ground, like, and it means they strike rich. Yeah, so they're just, you know, all day they're drilling into the ground for the hope of uh, releasing a gusher, which means they can retire uh, and sell rich. oil the rest of their life and live in Texas or uh, Brazil. <laughs> so, uh, Texas and Brazil are similar, right, guys? There's been a few gushers in Brazil, yeah. I think. Petrobras is uh, quite a large company. Um, so Facebook, there's such fascination with Facebook because they own so much land, right? And they own so, much, uh, so many layers of connections that... Theoretically, they own a piece of every gusher. Colingo could be a gusher that Facebook could share in the revenues of. And that's so what you, makes the yeah. stock market so interesting is you, you can't, Wall Street will tell you this is what Facebook's worth, but any person who's using all these great products would know that it's impossible to value someone owning all the real estate and all the connections uh, that's the exciting thing about what Facebook is. Nobody really knows what it is. Would you guys ahead, buy, please. if you had stock, if you had money, if you had $100, would you buy stock in Facebook 
or would you buy stock in Apple? What do you guys think? And what what stock in Apple? Apple? Why? Or Google? Apple. I'm called Lingo. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, Who said that? Is that the shopper? Did the shopper say <laughs> No, Flavia said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who, let's, let's go around. Bruno, what do you think? What should you buy stock in? Apple, Flavia Google, or Facebook, Facebook or Colingo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think nowadays uh, I will buy you know, on Apple. Uh, I was thinking about the subject, Howard. Um, in fact, if you use the Facebook as a tool to Colingo, for example, or as a, a way to communicate to people of Colingo, we have a risk too, because tomorrow maybe people don't use more Facebook or something like that. Then we have a risk for Colingo to know. Do you think Colingo might be weak if if people don't use Facebook anymore? Is that what you're saying? Yes, uh, we don't have this concern. Sure, but uh, yeah, but then. Uh, the idea would be that there would be another way for people to come on and use Colingo because Colingo itself hopefully would be valuable without Facebook. Okay. So we're not dependent on them, but we like them. We use them. I, you have a dependency, meaning, a dependency. meaning Facebook uh, can make it extra difficult or put a tax. Again, this is why you know Facebook's kind of like a government and that you know it's they have to you know there's pluses and minuses for how much power they exert over the people trying to improve the land or tenant improvements or yeah. land improvements as you would call them in real estate yeah. and so what Facebook is is a whole nother earth it's a whole nother planet which is what makes Wall Street so interesting is because they think they understand what a planet is worth, which is ridiculous, because the whole nobody in the world with all the calculators in the world could figure out what another planet is worth, and so that's what's so exciting about. Uh, and this is why Facebook will be very, very. It will go until you know, maybe another five years before people really can figure out how to truly value Facebook because we need to see how they govern as a country because Facebook is the largest country in the world probably Google's the second largest country in the world and then Apple is uh, the drunk very wealthy cousin uh, that has a home in every country of the world <laughs> and uh, a toll booth so so um, I think it's very interesting how how you can think about this. It, and I think we're going to be talking about these, these three giant planets, Apple and Amazon, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook uh, as planets. Uh, for the, It's a war of planets and a, and a war of land uh, grab. Uh, and so the next stock market won't be obviously in New York. It's going to be a much more. Hey, I had another person leave. It's going to be a much more global phenomenon. And so, using uh, Wall Street terms, I'm very bullish uh, at at many levels about how the world is shaping up. Uh, Can I ask you a question? Sure, let's do it. Yeah, actually, there are two questions. You know what would be cool? If you asked me a question in your language, and then I would answer it as if I understood it. <laughs> okay, that'd be great. Okay. Do that. Okay, so go ahead. Fire yeah. away in Spanish. Um, no. Wait, you, want me, you want me to ask no, you a question you in Portuguese? Yeah, no. That's ask me Portuguese. in Portuguese. Yeah, he, he, Portuguese. he said Portuguese is his first language, so... He doesn't know how to... Yeah, Portuguese, Portuguese is your first language, right? Yeah, yeah Canadian. Yeah. So where did yeah. you say it's Spanish? <laughs> okay, so go ahead. Tell in English. Ask me your question. Hey, okay, so yeah. Um, the first question you you were talking about Apple, Google, uh -huh. and Facebook as a war of planets. Mm -hmm. So Google has its own planet, like its own an uh, advertising planet. You know, like the, the website Google, their net, their social network, the uh, Google Plus, and everything. So yeah, it is a planet. Facebook is a planet. It's like um, it's much simpler to see Facebook as a planet. But what about Apple? I mean, they sell computers, and yeah. like 
So, um, so like I said, they're they're a landowner in every country or every planet. Um, uh, iTunes could have been a maybe a planet uh, if they had built that into a social uh, uh, layer. Um, I think they the iPhone itself maybe makes them a planet. Obviously, Google has something to say about that. Um, I think you're right. Like I don't I don't know. I was just making that up. So thanks for calling me out. On that. <laughs> All right. I didn't yeah, know you guys called such good That's English. That's what a phrase right. calling out. Tiago <laughs> just called Howard out. Call yeah, him just out. That means called that, my shizzle out. Yeah, he he called his shizzle. So he called he, my shizzle. It means when someone is talking and just making shit up, like Howard yeah, was, was doing, off of the top <laughs> of his head. Yeah. He was just off of the top of your head. It means he's making things up. What Tiago right. said, he called his bullshit. It means like <laughs> it wasn't. It was some good like, shit. Man. It was some good shit. <laughs> he was he. That Howard was, was really like, good. Here's another. I was out there. That was yeah. like. Woo, he was in that was like. All right. I was connecting. I was you into a new planet, everyone. I was connecting globally with my shizzle. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I think you're sharing. you a shizzle. I was sharing my shizzle. <laughs> Holy shit, I never thought I'd be saying oh, actually, maybe my shizzle to, be, my second to, session. to a person in uh, Brazil. Yeah, never so now you've got your shit. Uh, Howard's shizzle is all over the place. Uh, cross, <laughs> my, cross that off my bucket list. No, I, I, my shizzle is not in Brazil officially. This, how do you this write is... shizzle? Howard, can you type shizzle for them? There's a question. They don't know how to spell shizzle. Shizzle <laughs> is... Hang on. No, you use, use the group chat. You don't need to use. Look, I told you he's old. He's using a com he's using a pen, guys. Look how old he is. Shizzle. Oh he's my god. He's using a pen. Look how old he is. Shizzle, and it rhymes with drizzle. Drizzle. You guys know what drizzle is? Drizzle is bits of rain coming down. Some so Snoop Dogg. Some says, "Shizzle my nizzle, drizzle." That just means nonsense. <laughs> Am I, you think I'm ready to go gold status on Colingo yet? I, I don't know. Hey guys, would you pay for a class with Co with Howard, or would you rather? Am I a better teacher, or Howard is a better teacher? Let's have a debate. <laughs> so yes, we never me. had a class with Lee, but the Shizzle thing makes me a little bit afraid of paying for. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah loves me. She loves shopping, and she loves me. I Sarah. see. Yeah, Sarah, would you? Sarah loves shopping. What do you think? Who's a better Sarah teacher? Sarah loves shopping, and she loves Howard. She's gonna change her name to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be in a spot. I like you both. <laughs> oh, I see. You don't want to be in a fight. <laughs> Felipe, what do you think? Who's better? Oh, Felipe's a fan. Dude, don't put Felipe on the spot. Felipe's all Howard all the time. <laughs> so on my next lesson, I will make more stuff up about the stock market. <laughs> and get you further off topic. Yeah. Uh, I think you guys could probably teach me more about the stock market. Yeah. So let's have them talk a little bit and see what they have to say about. Does anyone have any questions? Do we want to do a debate? Maybe we only have about ten more minutes left. Um, does anyone have any questions? Do we want to maybe have a debate? That'd be fun. No uh, debate. I do actually. Uh, that would be my my second question. But, uh, What's your second your question? Yeah, so uh, Howard said that the stock market um, is like knowing how to the valuation of the planet, or sort of. But the way I see is more like betting on the valuation of the planet. What would you say about that? Um, Are you a gambler? Yeah, so it's a good question. Good question, Tiago. And, and you know, nobody likes a smart ass, even in Brazil. <laughs> so, uh, you're showing up the teacher. You're showing up my shizzle. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I don't look. So, I, uh, I, I think it is very much about probability, which is a big word. Um, so, doesn't know what so, probability is. So, I, I, I think the idea of the stock market is, is, getting more than one data point in your favor. So it is at some level a gambling, for sure. If, but to some people it's a sure thing. So, so there's somebody that knows when they sell you something that they screwed you, and there's somebody that buys that thinks that they screwed the other person. That's why a transaction happens. If somebody thinks 
they're right and another person thinks they're right. So I don't think it's gambling because I think at the price that a transaction happens, there's somebody willing to buy it and there's somebody willing to sell it. So, so um, basically the stock market is people trying to screw each other. Absolutely. <laughs> with clothes on and with nice suits. With clothes on and nice suits. <laughs> Which is part of the problem. You should take your clothes off. If everybody traded in the nude, uh, Howard, we're trying out. to keep Kalingo safe <laughs> and away from. We don't want to turn you it into the raw teacher for that. You have and now raw. one of our teachers is saying that we should turn this into. It should be naked to English. Yes, naked English is a different be, site. That's why chat roulette was so popular. Chat roulette. Chat roulette. <laughs> I, I'm for a Kalingo roulette. Why don't we change the name to Kalingo roulette? No, no I, 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 but yeah. that's a good question. Um, I don't think it's gambling. I think it all is how you treat it. If you treat it like a casino, it is a casino. If you treat it with respect, uh, which enough people do, then it's a market. And um, I think you can, it's all about putting as many data points and probability, increasing that probability of you being right. You're always going to be wrong more than you're right, but it's still, a, it's, I don't think it's about gambling. But if you oh. say it's gambling and you say it enough times, then you will treat it as gambling. Does that help? Hard. Yeah, um, all right. More philosophical. It's much more philosophical. Uh, okay. Howard, we we have some profiles of, of people that you uh, use to apply in the market and different kind of of, uh, of ways to do it. Then we have people that use statistics and the software and the, do this thing all day long and do by a professional way. And we have some people that uh, do what you said that is just just like a gamble and put your cards on the table and you go by luck. Uh, do you think that these people that do their things on the right way and use software, statistics, this kind of thing really have best opportunities than the other? Because it's a, a kind of luck game, the, the, the market, no? What do you think? I think uh, it's a good question. Um, it's not for everybody, for sure. Um, I think it's much more philosophical. I think, I think you can, you know, I'm, I'm much more, you know, if I showed you a, a bottle of water, there's some people that would say that this is half full, and there's other people that would say this is half empty, right? Mm -hmm. And that's and that's the market is. There's enough people that think this is half full that there's a market. And there's enough people that think it's half empty that are willing to say it's half empty and they yell it louder or we're willing to pay for that uh, message to be. So I think, I think that's what's the beauty of the markets is I think there's people that trade all day, you know, on Wall Street and then there's uh, people, legends like Warren Buffett who buys and just walks away and, and knows that things are worth more than what he paid for and is willing to wait. So I think if you try and do it every minute of every day, you will go insane and uh, you will start to think the world is out to get you. And that that everybody. To you, but no, it happened to me in 2000. It happened to me in 2000. Yeah, I don't think it's a healthy, I think the markets are a beautiful thing and they're very unhealthy too. Because you have to, it's just like Facebook or texting. You have to and take yourself fiction. away. You have to learn how to like look at it from a thousand feet, not every minute. Uh, and you know, football is the same way. It's like you have all these heavy, heavy people getting bigger and bigger, and they just they're grinding on each other all day. And you go, well, how does anybody get anywhere? But obviously, sometimes there's an ex opening and an explosion. And I think that's the stock market. Is it American people, football, by the way? So, yeah, so there's people that uh, are doing this, and I think they get bigger and faster and meaner and dirtier. Can everyone do this, please? Everyone, yeah, do this. Everyone at the same time. Come on. Come on. <laughs> good. Good. All right, good. This is what people do in the stock market. All right, everyone learn how to do this. Doing. This is what they're doing, and they're, they're paying doing that. to get... They're doing that. Hidden hands. Paying the, they're paying to get bigger With and faster. With beautiful clothes. And, what did you say, Flavio? With beautiful clothes. 
with beautiful yeah, clothes. See? <laughs> and and so so people are paying to to be bigger and faster. And then there's other people, the the wimpy people like me, that stand way out here and look at and they look at all these people going like this and go, well, they're crazy. I, if I take a step back and talk to all my friends in Brazil and uh, Taiwan and Chile and hey, look at the bulls, the horns on. <laughs> yeah. uh, so if I talk to all these people around the world, I, I'm going to be less panicked and less thinking about what Amazon's worth today or Facebook's worth today. And I, I know that it's worth much more in a bigger planetary way than 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 the market is not rigged, obviously. So. It's a very philosophical thing, and I think you can. It's a good. It's a good question. Where's that noise coming from? Who has a question? Hughes is acting up. That's a different language. That's all I know. <laughs> I can't hear. I got. Sorry, sorry, it was me. I think it's. It might be Laura actually. No, I think no. it was Tiago. Okay. I am muted. You are muted. You got muted. Flavia, did you have a question? I know that you had one question you wanted to ask Howard. Yeah, Howard, can you give us the opportunity to be rich and tell us some of the best stocks? Ooh, that's a dangerous question. Yeah. Uh, there is no, there is no good way to get rich unless you have rich parents. And then you so. kill them. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> If you can kill your parents and not get caught, if you can kill your rich parents and not get caught, you that too is the shall answer. be rich. That's right. And but that's, that's on only a certain planet. Is that right, Howard? There's only one. No, no, no. Whatever planet you're on, if you kill your rich parents and don't get caught, you are rich. <laughs> so uh, there is no. I think it's a. <laughs> Let's just all laugh. That's universal. <laughs> We're on Kalingo. We're not only going to teach you English. We're going to teach you how to kill your parents. And I, not I, I, is, is that I why you have the horns? The, and yes, that's I, why I'm, I'm the not going to get into the mechanics of how to kill your parents. I'm just saying. Right. If, and by the way, you can no one will ever perfect know. Way. That you'll that you are uh, that you're going to plan to kill your parents because it's not like this is on YouTube or anything, and there will be no evidence of that. So I wouldn't worry about that at all. This is a <laughs> private room. Everything's fine. We're just friends here. And by the way, I'm the devil. Ah, <laughs> there is uh, there's no easy way to get rich. I think um, I think every generation there's five to ten companies that we all know and we all live with and experience that we should own and hand off you know to the next generation you know whether it was coke or railroads or disney or petrobras or um apple right now we have an apple and we have google and amazon um, I think you have to keep your antennas up, no pun intendedly. Uh, you have to keep your horns. You have to listen to the world around you and find those companies that you know that you're going to be living with for the next 20 years, those next brands and those, and those businesses that are you know no matter what happens in the world, they're going to be around you and you're going to be a part of, and you need to own them, and you need to put money in them consistently, you know, every three months or every month, and that's how you get rich. I mean, that's the shortcut of how to get rich. What so, are your favorite brands? But, uh, okay, good question. That's a good question. Okay, I think Nike is uh, one of the, the great brands for the next 20 years. I think Google uh, and Amazon uh, I think if you can, you know, if there were three companies that I wanted to buy every month for my kids, you know, if I was going to put twenty dollars a month into three companies for the next ten years, it would be Google, Nike, and Amazon. And Kalinga as the fourth. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I don't. Not yet. Even though I have money in Kalinga, I would like it back after today's class. <laughs> hey, so, uh, that's a, that's well, a very good question. So. So the question is, 
those three brands, and I can go to bed at night. I see my kids using them. I see internationally. I'm not worried. I think they can grow. I think um, I try, and I think there's so much opportunity around those three brands and those three product lines and companies that if I had money to put away every month, I wouldn't put it in the savings account. I would put it in those three stocks. Maybe Disney is a fourth. Uh, but you know, uh, and then everybody probably has locally uh, or nationally a company that resonates with them uh, as much as those brands do with me. So good question. That's how you should start. Is if you have a thousand dollars to invest, don't invest it all tomorrow. Uh, invest a hundred dollars a month for the next ten months in four companies or three companies uh, that you think will be around for twenty years and grow, and that's how you get rich. So, uh, oh. good question, Flavia, and uh, hopefully you don't kill your parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But hopefully they're rich. Hopefully they're rich. Howard, uh, I have a question. Uh, like for me, that uh, I'm interested in stocks, and I I don't know anything about it. So I just wanted to start start it from somewhere. Uh, do you have any advice where should I start or like stock tweets? Is there a way that I can learn something there that I can use for real? Uh, you know for I mean? real. I mean, for real learning or for real investing real money? Yeah, or like investing real if, money. I, if I have money now, how can I invest? Like now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How, so how, how can I invest? So yeah. I think I, I, I would, oh, I don't know what. Uh, uh, what's a, 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 a what's a brokerage in uh, Brazil that you can use? What what is the the market here? Yeah, what what is a bank that allows you to buy shares? Uh, there's a our stock think it's business, but uh, we don't know how to do it. Like yeah. That's yeah, I don't. Point. I don't know how you can do it in Brazil. I, obviously, there's a brokerage or a bank they call them that allows you to buy uh, American shares. Go ahead, uh, Bruno. We we have uh, some banks in Brazil that have uh, also support to people that want to start. Uh, how the the a lot of people in this room is from Brazil. I'm putting here a link that I don't know if we, if everybody knows. But it's from Folha in of São Paulo in Brazil. Uh, that's a game, and you can buy and sell X uh, sell the your actions your stuff in in the game, but the value is it's real, and you can 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 see the how much you you earn or lose without investing real money. It's very interesting because you can start to do with this. And then buy the actions, the the stock then. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I I I'm also an investor at a company called eToro.com. E T O R O. I was, I was going to ask that. Uh, e E T O R O dot com, and so I think you can open an account uh, in Brazil or internationally, and then. And can you send us I, the link? Uh, yeah, how do I? Uh, There's a button in the top right on, right right on the paper. Sorry, top oh, yeah, left yeah. corner. Right on the paper and show up for us. <laughs> I just got kicked out of my own class. <laughs> Is uh, on uh, 25% Apple, 25% Nike, Amazon, and Google. And invest equally every month for the next two years. So, uh, so that's how I would do it if I was starting uh, today. Is if I have two thousand dollars to invest, I would invest, you know, a hundred dollars a month, uh, twenty-five dollars a month in each of those four companies. Uh, for the next, and you can probably do it on eToro.com. And uh, at the end of those two years, you will average in at, uh, in some of the greatest companies. And then you have to garden, but that's how I would start. And then uh, email me if I'm wrong. Good luck me. Good luck me returning that email though. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll be in okay. uh, the Bahamas. Be in the okay, Bahamas. so um, let's say that I want to... So guys, yeah, we have five even, more minutes left, okay? okay keep going, Five yeah. more minutes? All right, so um, I want to get even more rich than buying just Apple, Google, and everything. So I Hold will... Hold on. An English moment. You want to get richer, not richer. more rich. Right, yeah. right. So you got to learn some English here on Colingo. This is serious. All right. All right. <laughs> Um, so I want to buy like a small company that I think it's going to grow even bigger than Apple or Google will. Uh, what would you look in those companies? Like, what? How would you choose? What would you look for in a company that would make you buy them? That makes me like a small oh, no. company that's going to be really big. Is that what you mean? I think we yeah. got off subject. So, uh, boy, that's a hard one. I think uh, it's very risky to buy small companies. Uh, right, but small companies, do they go public or okay. only when they grow bigger? Yeah, I mean, the odds of success of a small company are much, you know, so you're, you're supposed to make more money if you take more risk in a small company. Um, but as a young I think anybody under 20, I think everybody here is probably under 20 or under 25. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, Some people I, are laughing that are not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Flavio's 15. Sorry. No. Oh. Are, you, are you old enough to be on Google Hangouts? <laughs> the, I'm 27. Uh, 27? Yeah. Right. And Laura, Sorry. I think, is older. And Sorry Bruno. about that. Flavia, your life's half over. If you lived in Africa, your life would be more than half over. <laughs> <laughs> I've now offended another continent. Yeah. Now, yeah. You did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys are tiring me out. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> I think that's going to be the end of the class. It was a lot of fun. Everyone thank Howard, and especially thank me. Because I, you know, <laughs> I'm the next class. Let's be honest. You're all being so modest today. Yes, good word, modest. Exactly Thank right. you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. That was a lot of fun. Hope Thank you me. learned a little bit about uh, the the silliness of uh, Wall Street. Yeah, and that Silly transcript stuff. from the class, guys. I will share it with everyone. Um, and we will, you know, if you guys have any other questions. Let me know, and I'm glad. And obviously, there's going to be a YouTube video of this class too, so you oh can watch God. it. Oh my God, YouTube! Oh yeah. Very good. <laughs> okay, I'm see you, everybody. Talking. All right, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you, Howard. Thanks, Howard. Thank All right, guys. Thanks for showing up. I know that uh, it might have been a little hard to understand, right? Um, no, I, I got it all, and it was pretty good to learn a couple of words that okay. are not usual. Okay. Pretty good. All right, good. I'm glad. Everyone thought that was valuable? What do you think, Felipe? Uh, yeah, I, 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 just, I just said that it was really good to, to be involved with a couple of words that are, I'm not usual, like in the stocks and shares and this kind cool. of things. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cool. All right. Well, we're going to do a lot of these uh, we're going to do a lot of these more big classes and hopefully the next class we're going to have people talking. You guys will talk more. I have some more special guests that some of which might be even more famous, hopefully. <laughs> Um, so it should be fun. All right, so I'm gonna go. Yeah. Uh, can um, I ask something? I invite sure. uh, Julia Rob Roberts or these kinds of <laughs> girls from Hollywood to talk right. with us. Yeah, be, we're gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get Hollywood. I'm gonna try to get Hollywood girls. You got it, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. 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 Thanks, man.